Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you happen to be watching this video, people of the vinyl community, tis I, Connor, and today we shall be speaking about the essential power metal albums slash bands. So we shall start with what is power metal? Let me just simplify it real quick. You know, heavy metal, and you know, speed metal. But is heavy metal played fast? Right? You with me? Okay. With speed metal, you go two ways. You go thrash, which is aggressive, or you go power, which is more melodic. More fantastical, more... Um, more epic as well. So, with that established, let's talk about essential bands, in my personal opinion. And we shall start with Beast in Black. Now, fun fact for you, I have tried to record this thing twice already, so, um, yes, rather pissed right now, but I shall calm down for my viewers and talk to you about Beast in Black Berserker. Now, this is a part of the European style of power metal, which is, um, as I said, more fantastical and more melodic, with more symphonic elements, or in the form of Beast in Black, more 80s pop. I know. <laughs> they make it work. They really make it work, Beast in Black. Um, and the vocalist, Yanis Papadopoulos, has one of the greatest vocal ranges in metal today. And the song that I would recommend for you to listen to is Blind and Frozen, if you have not listened to this band before. Either that or Beast in Black, the title track itself. However, my favourite song off of this is Zod the Immortal. And this album is based off the anime, loosely based, or however based it is, you're going to have to Google, based on the anime known as Berserk. So, yeah, Berserk. Arr. <laughs> anyway, this is a band who were originally a speed metal band, but became a power metal band on this album here. Somewhere far beyond. The first three albums were more uh, speed metal, and this is Blind Guardian. Um, Battalions of Fear, Follow the Blind, and Tales from the Twilight World are more speed metal albums, while well, this is power metal. Um, yeah, even though throughout the band's life they have sung about J.R.R. Tolkien's books, um, Lord, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, and especially The Silmarillion, they did an album based off of that whole book called Nightfall of Middle Earth, but this is my favourite of theirs. And the track I would suggest for you to listen to off of here is Somewhere Far Beyond. Incredible song. Incredible band, listen to Blind Guardian. If you have not already, if you have, good for you. Now for some of these bands, I go off of their, um, their Google classifications, under what genres that they come under, and Crimson Glory right here come under Power Metal, so here they are. However, I personally also consider them Power Metal too, so there you go. Um... Yeah, these guys are also progressive metal as well. I don't have enough prog in, in my collection to do a, a good enough justice to the prog metal, prog rock scene. Um, so, yeah. The vocalist here, Midnight, is, like, <laughs> mind-blowing. Absolutely incredible vocalist here. Favourite track is uh, Red Sharks. And the track list is perfect. Not a dud here. Same thing with their self-titled debut, Crimson Glory, as well. Okay, this next one is one that I was trying to listen to earlier. However, I decided to make this video. Hate Breeder by Children of Bodom. That's why the disc is still up, because I'm going to put it back and listen to the rest. So yeah, these guys on Google are classified as power metal, and they're also classified as power metal in my book, too. They're not only melodic death metal, 
What's melodic death metal? Death metal with more melody. There you go. Simple. Easy to understand. So yeah. Um, favorite song of the pier. It's been too long since I've listened to this, so right now, it's uh, Silent Night, Bodom Night. Great stuff. So I got a notification on my phone there, because I am using my phone. I will get a camera eventually when... Um, I think around about March time I'll buy a camera for this. Maybe redo some of my older, older videos like that. Who knows? So yeah. Shout out to Bodom Night, Breeder. Great stuff. Uh, rest in peace to the um, guitarist Alexei Laiho. Absolute beast of a guitarist. I only own their first three albums, so I only have experience with those first three. But yeah. Rest in peace, man. You will be missed. Right, this next one is more of a notable release because of the fusion of Iced Earth and Blind Guardian. There, these are This is Dem Demons and Wizards. Um... Now, I have mentioned John Schaefer the last two times I've recorded this, so I might as well do it now. If you want to find out my opinions on his actions recently, you will not get them on this channel. Um, so yeah, if you don't know what he did, go and Google. But pretty much there will no longer be any Demons and Wizards or Ice Earth albums. Ah, uh, yeah. That's a shame. Yeah, this is a notable release. I've only really heard um, their album 3 all the way through, which will be in my um, top albums of 2020. So yeah, very notable band right here because of the fusion between two of my absolute favourites. Now, Epica on Google and for me are considered power metal. But they're also melodic death, symphonic metal, you know. Uh, genre definitions can get a bit muddy, and this is one of the bands that make it so. So yeah, Epica. Uh, favourite song of this is actually, well, the song I would say for you to listen to, or start listening to these guys, is on this album, The Holographic Principle, and that would be Edge of the Blade. Or Universal Death Squad, that one is also amazing. So yeah, I would recommend to you this album for those two songs. If you like them, go back to this one, because this is a better album. Listen to this, but then finish this after that. You will not regret it. They have a female singer called Simone Simons, who is one of the best vocalists within... Um, symphonic metal as a whole. Symphonic metal being an offshoot of power metal. Just more symphony involved. I forgot to mention Dragon Force before I went straight on to E. Yeah, I do these alphabetically if you haven't noticed. Um, yeah, Britain's own Dragon Force right here. Uh, love these guys. This album, Sonic Firestorm, and their most recent effort, Extreme Power Metal, are all really, really, really good. Um, Yep. Favourite song of this one, however, Valley of the Damned, is Disciples of Babylon. I love that track due to how uh, musically uh, varied it is. It has your normal Dragon Force speed metal, power metal start and end, but it has this awesome little acoustic middle. It's a great little sandwich of awesome on this amazing album. Let's the Dragon Force. Anyway, next up we have the silly, stupid, ridiculous premise of Glory Hammer of a fantastical fictional version of Dundee, which is where I live by the way, um, which is being invaded by zombie unicorns at the behest of an evil wizard. And this dude, Angus McFife, is the one to try and thwart him with the ti the title hammer there, the glory hammer. Yeah. Incredibly ridiculously silly, but I love it. If you love some cheese in your power metal, go glory hammer. You will not regret your decision. If you like cheese, I guess. 
I'm a connoisseur, I'll tell you. Anyway. Hammerfall is next. These guys are from Sweden. And they are, right now, my favourite Swedish power metal band, even though Sabaton are also whoa, really high up in my estimations. They are. So yeah, Hammerfall. Great band. Favourite song of Legacy of Kings, which is my favourite uh, retro album from them, is Dreamland. Yes, um, definitely give these guys a listen. And I would also recommend their newest album, Dominion. One, for that absolutely badass and metal as fuck cover. Like, I, I should have brought this out for the, uh, the Rock Scouts questions. Because uh, I, um, I remember a question there of, well, it was, what is the most metal cover? I think it would be this. I should have thought of this, but I didn't. Favourite track of here is Testify, even though I would say for you to listen to the title track, Dominion. That song is also incredible. This album is incredible, and it's in this incredible digipack. How many times can I say incredible? Um, yeah, lots. Dominion. Awesome. Anywho, I'm wearing their shirts, so I might as well show you the albums. And the shirt is actually of their most famous albums, the Keeper of the Seven Keys albums. Part 2 is on the back. There's part 1. And here is part 2. I've showed these albums a ton on this channel. However, if you're new, favourite tracks off of this are I Am Alive, um, Twilight of the Gods, Future World and Halloween. Favourite tracks of a part two, which is my favourite album out of those two. Eagle Fly Free. March of Time, which is my favourite Halloween song ever. Keeper of the Seven Keys. Yeah, love it. However, the album that I would recommend for you outside, well, albums, I would recommend for you outside of those two are these two. Master of the Rings and the Time of the Oath. These are two albums with the third singer of the band, Andy Derris, who is incredibly underrated um, within Halloween itself. Favourite track of this is Soul Survivor. And my favourite track of the Time of the Oath is Power. So yeah, this is uh, one of my favourite Halloween albums. My third place... Yeah, third place. I, I'm not going to own their discography, so... I can spoil that all I want. Anyway, here is one of the bands which blurs the lines between... Well, as, as to what power metal is, really. Um, because these guys play heavy metal, thrash metal, and power metal all at the same time. Yeah, they're a Swiss Army Knife band. Um, and this album is the Dark Saga based on Spawn, right there. Favourite song is The Hunter. So yeah, this is more of the American style of power metal, which... However, Ice Earth do keep the melody and occasional symphonic elements from um, European power metal, which is great. But they also have the Man of War style testosterone field fuck yeah metal. Uh, which we are going on to now with Hail to England by Man of War. Fist pumping, um, adrenaline field, testosterone field metal might. That's what these guys are. The favourite track of here is Army of the Immortals, which is my favourite Man of War song, Full Stop. So yeah, because this is my favourite Man of War album. I do own um, Kings of Metal on vinyl, which is cool. I would like an original of this on vinyl. That would be pretty nifty. So yeah, that's the American style of metal right there. Right there. Love it. 
Anywho, we have six left to show, with uh, one more honourable mention. Okay, Nightwish. Yes, uh, their early albums can be classified as power metal in my mind. Um, their first four, with a stretch on their fifth album once, but this album right here is just pure power metal. I love it. Wishmaster. It's based on a series of books as well, but should have done a bit more research into that to tell you what books it's based on, but if you know the band, and if you're big on the band, you might already know. So yeah, favourite track of here? Well, this track list is mind-blowing. But that's mainly because of the singer Tarja Turunen, who is a powerhouse, no longer with the band, sadly. Uh, but... Um, if I was to pick, I'd say Bear Grace Misery. But next we have my favourite power metal band, Power Wolf. Yep. Um, my brother Ryan, if you're watching this, thank you. <laughs> I love these guys now, since you have introduced me to them. Um, favourite song of this is... Um, Higher Than Heaven, even though the whole thing is incredible. I'd also say the album Bible of the Beast is also amazing. Basically, their whole discography is great. And they didn't really find their sound until Bible of the Beast, though. No, Lupus Dei, which, which I need. Uh, yeah. Blessed and Possessed, Power Wolf. Great album. Next! Primal Fear, Nuclear Fire. Yep. A uh, fun fact for you about the uh, singer of this band, Ralph Sheepers. He was in the power metal band known as Gamma Ray. And he was also rumoured to replace Judas Priest. No, replace Rob Halford of Judas Priest. But instead, uh, Tim Ripper Owens got the gig instead. And he went on to be in Iced Earth. So yeah, uh, favourite song of this is Angel in Black. Um, yeah, I love this album. It's also on my uh, patch jacket, which we call Battle Jacket, but you already know that if you're a metalhead. So yeah, there you go. Primal Fear Nuclear Assault. Great German band right there. Now we have Rhapsody. Or Rhapsody of Fire as they are now known. So yeah, this is Symphony of Enchanted Lands. My favourite song of this is Emerald Sword. Yeah, these guys are one of the first bands to come up with the symphonic metal style. So... Without these guys, you wouldn't have bands like, um, Nightwish, Epica, Within Temptation, which I have, which I'm not going to mention here. I don't really consider them power metal. Um, yeah, they're a bit too light for me. So yeah, Rhapsody. Amazing album right here. And an amazing band. Next up, second to last, before I give you a couple of honourable mentions, Sabaton. I mentioned them earlier when speaking about Hammerfall and Swedish bands. So yeah, these guys are my second favourite Swedish power metal band. And these guys um, use a fusion of the American style of power metal and the European to come together to sing about... Um, ancient and modern military conflicts or historical events in general so yeah not only is it metal which is good for your ear holes it is also knowledge because they bring uh, proper historical facts into these lyrics which is a great idea should teach people about history so yeah that is why i love the sabaton and they sound amazing that also helps with their um, uh, 
yeah, it also helps. That moment when you lose track of your words. <laughs> oh, I love unscripted videos, don't you? And finally, we have Sonata Arctica, which is a modern, uh, well, a very recent favourite of mine. Um, so, yeah. Favourite song of here is uh, Destruction Preventer. This is Ecliptica, by the way, and this was Heroes, Sabaton. But if you can read, you could have filmed that out yourself, but I like saying the album name. That's what I do. So, yeah. Ecliptica. Sonata Arctica. Love it to pieces. Their second album, Silence, is also very good. Anyway, the honourable mentions. Um, I did bring Camelot out the last time I recorded this video. Um, so Camelot is one of them. Here is another one which bridges. They're just all over the place. But they can be put in power metal. That's metal church. They can also be put into thrash and heavy metal as well. And speed metal. They're just all over the shop. You can't really pin them down to one genre. I call it Venom Metal. Why? Because I'd say the same about that band too. Venom. Speed metal, thrash metal, heavy metal, traditional. Fucking new wave of British heavy metal. Black metal. Kind of. <laughs> kind of, sort of. Maybe, no. No. <laughs> but yeah. Metal Church, The Dark, is also one I'd recommend for Power Metal too. But they're also heavy, thrash, speed. They just, the, yeah, I just can't pinpoint them. Alrighty. Uh, there's a, a couple of bands that I don't own. But I'm not going to mention them because um, we're already at 22 minutes. I don't want to stretch it so any further than it needs to be. So, um, thank you, as always, for watching this uh, rather long video. Um, it's my standard over 20 minutes. And, and I hope you like the new setup, by the way. And it will be improved in the next couple of weeks when I get some new shelving for my final. So I can film not only over here in front of my CDs but also over there where I used to film uh, with uh, vinyl shelves in the background. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and as always I shall see you in the next video and rock on bitches.